I think we are ready to start. Welcome to our research seminar and thank you for coming. Uh, let me introduce our today's presenter. It's Maria Stravnaya, the lecturer at the Faculty of Economic Science and research fellow at the International Research Laboratory for Institutional Analysis of Economic Reforms at Higher School of Economics. So, Maria, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you and good afternoon, dear colleagues. Today I'd like to present you the project about favoritism in public procurement auctions with the Dogena Century. So this is the joint project with Lena Patkolzina. Um, I'd like to start from uh, um, some things that uh, motivate uh, this paper. So public procurement constitutes a significant part of GDP and domestic demand in many countries. So the list of these countries includes both developing countries like India or Indonesia or Brazil, or developed countries like the members of uh, uh, European Union or United States of America. So Russia here is no exception. This proportion of GDP varies from 10-15 to 25 percent. So that's huge amounts of money. This money may be used to achieve a variety of goals. A primary goal, of course, uh, is uh, to achieve a value for money. So, uh, different public entities uh, procure public goods for the society, for the citizens, for instance, road construction. Also, they may uh, purchase some private goods like drugs for the public hospitals or dairy products for the children and their moms. Also, of course, they procure some goods and services for public entities themselves. Uh, meanwhile, that's not uh, the only goal of public procurement. Also, uh, public procurement may be used to, as an additional source of demand to boost innovation or to encourage uh, the development of some industries or some groups of companies like medium or micro companies. However, that's a um, big problem in public procurement of many countries different sources of active and passive waste. So by active waste uh, we mean um, a different uh, corruption, uh, collusion and other rent seeking practices that leads to waste of public funds and by the source uh, of passive waste in different types of inefficiencies that arise in public procurement. For instance, very strict and unnecessary regulation, bureaucratization, that may act uh, as a red tape for companies that prevent, uh, prevents them from, uh, participation, from participation in public auctions uh, and uh, destroys competition. So both of them, active and passive waste, uh, destroys competition actually. So uh, as a result, uh, we may see that uh, public entities uh, tend to buy uh, goods and services at higher prices than in the private sector and competition in public procurement auction is usually low. So the question arises, uh, is it possible to boost somehow competition in public procurement auctions? Now I'd like uh, to uh, tell you a few words about the literature mostly related to this topic. So actually there are two different strands of literature. One of them, of course, that's uh, the literature on the auction theory. So starting from 1961, when Wick republished his pioneering paper on auctions, um, different researchers uh, study auctions. And uh, first, uh, in first uh, papers, uh, they are uh, based upon assumption that uh, in each auction there is uh, uh, exogenously given number of bidders. So uh, the researchers uh, compare different types of auctions. Um, mm, the most basic types, like there are four of them, first price and second price still bid auctions, English auction and Dutch auctions. So uh, the researchers compare the equivalents, uh, the equivalents of the bidding strategies, of the payoffs of auctioneers and bidders. And they all come to the conclusion that the more companies enter the auction, the lower the price in the public procurement auction is. However, as you may know, in the uh, real world, that's the company uh, who decides 
whether it enters the auction or not. So this decision is made endogenously. And uh, that's the problem that uh, arised uh, in uh, these first papers. And the model of endogenous entry deals with this problem. Uh, one may uh, indicate two impo the most important uh, models of endogenous entry. Uh, the former by uh, Samuelson, that's the model of selective or informative entry, and the latter, that's the model of uh, uh, non-selective, non-informative entry by Levin and Smith. Now I'd like to just uh, say a couple of words about the main idea behind both two papers and uh, the main difference between them. So if we consider public procurement auction, uh, it starts when a uh, procurer announces the auction. He announces some um, bidding uh, for the product at uh, um, exogenously given reserve price. There are N companies in the market, uh, N big companies, and N small companies enter the auction. Um, so all these companies uh, carry out two types of costs. First uh, type of cost is entry costs. Um, these costs uh, are related to preparing uh, the bid, uh, submitting a bid, uh, registering for participation, so all this uh, paperwork. Uh, and the other type of uh, the cost is production costs, so the costs that are related to the execution of public contract. And the main difference between these two models is uh, uh, in the moment um, is in the moment when the company realizes its private uh, production costs. So uh, in the model of selective entry, company gets this information before the auction. So there is some threshold level of production costs. Uh, company knows uh, its production costs and whether they are under or lower its production level. If they are under this production level, the company understands that uh, it may uh, earn some positive payoff in the auction, so it enters. As otherwise, it doesn't enter. Uh, in contrast to it, in the model of Levin and Smith, all the companies are equal before the auction because they uh, get this private information only when the auction is done. So each of them enters uh, the auction with some certain probability. Uh, there are a number of uh, following studies that uh, either uh, adapt uh, one of these models in different environmental settings or compare these two models or try, tr try to uh, test them on di different data sets. Uh, but to, this, to the best of our knowledge, uh, none of this paper uh, deals with the problem of corruption, so how corruption affects entry and procurement prices in uh, case of endogenous entry. And uh, basically the papers on corruption and public procurement is uh, the second strand of the literature, mostly r related to the topic of competition in public auctions. So um, we follow um, Maurer and uh, they define corruption as the abuse of public office uh, uh, for private gain. So uh, corruption uh, prevents uh, competition because it makes uh, collusion, horizontal collusion between companies more stable. Uh, it uh, uh, makes, uh, it, it, it disrupts uh, allocation efficiency. So the most effective company, the company with the, low co the, the lowest production costs, will not uh, win the auction under the corruption. Uh, also, of course, it leads to high procurement prices. The government uh, tries to somehow uh, deal with this problem, to s fix it. Uh, either, uh, it can use a variety of different methods either by just uh, encouraging entry of some companies or fighting corruption, for instance, with high transparency, or doing both, uh, both ways uh, simultaneously. Uh, uh, our project is um, mostly related to the third uh, 
gov governmental attempt to encourage competition. So when government tries to lower entry costs, tries to uh, deal with this uh, paperwork that the company should uh, carry out in order to participate in public procurement auction. So um, in the recent decade, uh, in, in, in many countries, uh, the governments of many countries conducted electronic procurement reform that was aimed at uh, reducing these uh, entry costs. Uh, there are quite uh, there are enough paper on this topic about different countries, but still their results are somehow controversial. And uh, again, um, not all of these papers address the issue of corruption. Uh, while uh, it's really a problem either in uh, uh, both in uh, India uh, that uh, and in Indonesia that uh, Levis Vopel with co-authors study, or in Italy or in Russia. So, um, the purpose of this study is uh, to examine how favouritism uh, affects competition in public procurement auctions with endogenous entry. So, here we focus on the specific type of corruption, that's favouritism, when uh, the procurer can extract a bribe only from one company, that's the favourite company. Favouritism arises because of some informal connection be connections between the public procurer and uh, this uh, potentially favorite company, and because uh, or because, for instance, uh, public procurer knows some uh, specific characteristics of this company uh, that are unique uh, for it, so he can manipulate contract uh, terms in favor of this company. So basically, we ask two questions. So what's the impact of favoritism on a competition in public procurement? Um, by competition, we measure two indicators, uh, entry of companies, so the number of companies that uh, make uh, bids in auction, and the contract prices. So uh, we, we measure them in two different ways. And uh, also, we are interested to know how do uh, entry costs affect uh, sustainability of favoritism and uh, procurement prices uh, when this favoritism uh, becomes possible. So, uh, the rest of my presentation will be organized as follows. First of all, I'd like to cover the basic uh, version of our theoretical model about favoritism. Uh, we base our model on uh, the model of Samuelson. Uh, and then uh, I'd like to um, say a few words uh, about uh, our em em empirical part of our research. So about two cases. One of them illustrates uh, the main assumptions of our model about manipulation of contract terms. And the other case illustrates uh, the main result of the model. So, uh, let's uh, consider this model of favoritism. Uh, here, as in Smelson's or Levin and Smith model, there are n uh, companies and, and big companies uh, in the market that carry out two different types of costs, entry costs, uh, that may be from zero to one, they're equal for each uh, company and private production costs uh, that are identically, independently, uniformly distributed between zero and one. Uh, and small of the companies enter. And um, uh, the company one is the potentially favorite company. So the procurer uh, can uh, extract uh, a bribe from this company. Uh, Procurer holds uh, first price standard seal bid auction, where each company makes a bid that maximizes its, its uh, expected payoff. Um, we assume that uh, if uh, at least one company enters the auction, so it makes a bid, then the contract will be concluded and uh, the procurer gets uh, some contract uh, value that equals one. Otherwise, uh, when uh, none of the company enters the auction, uh, procurer gets nothing. Uh, procurer maximizes his expected utility uh, in uh, 
the simplest uh, way that we consider at first, uh, that's uh, just the probability of purchase. So uh, he chooses contract terms. He, uh, he may either manipulate contract terms in favor of the company one, then only this company can enter the auction, or either not manipulate these contract terms, then each of the company with the uh, production costs under the threshold level uh, enter the auction. Also, the nature assign, assigns a type uh, sigma to the procurer, so the procurer either is benevolent or corrupt. If he is benevolent, he cannot uh, demand a bribe. If he is corrupt, he can do it. Uh, now I'd like to consider in more details our assumption about uh, manipulation of contract terms and how uh, it's related to the contract Peter, can price. Can yes. Ask a short question. Could you yeah. <coughs> what is known for whom? Uh, for example, or Sigma. Is it a private information of a procurer or Yeah. Uh, yes, yes. That's yes, Sigma is a private information of the public procurer. Um, whether he, the procurer manipulates or not uh, the contract, that's public information, that's just yeah, the contract term that he announces. Uh, then uh, uh, entry costs are pr public information, uh, private production costs, they are private. Also, um, mm, basically here we assume that uh, none of the company, uh, none of the non-favorite company uh, doesn't know about this uh, corrupt agreement between uh, the procurer and uh, the company one. But even if they would know, uh, even if they knew about it, uh, it uh, would not affect uh, their bidding strategies. Be because uh, uh, that's the contract terms, manipulative or not, that affect this contract, uh, this th their bidding behavior. And as we will see later, both benevolent and corrupt procurers can manipulate uh, contract terms in some conditions. Uh, so, um, uh, le le let's see um, uh, how manipulation of contract terms is related to the um, parameters of competition, to the entry and uh, procurement price. So, when the procurer does not manipulate contract terms, standard first price seal bid auction is, hold, is held, so uh, the number of companies that enter may be from one, two and big companies with some certain probability. Uh, the price uh, in this auction, that's the minimum uh, bid of the companies that enter to the auction and the probability of the purchase is the probability that basically at least one of the company enters the auction. So at least one of the companies uh, has uh, production costs that are under this threshold level. We can see the uniform distribution, so that's the formula for it. Uh, when in uh, the second case, when the procurer manipulates uh, contract terms, then only the favorite company, uh, the company one, that's not the favorite still, uh, the, the company one uh, can enter the auction. So when the purchase is hold, uh, the number of the company is always equal to one. This company, mm, re reading, reading contract documentation, it realizes that uh, these uh, contract terms are very manip manipulative, so only it uh, can enter the auction. That's why it uh, bids uh, the highest possible price, the reserve price. Uh, and the probability of uh, the purchase just uh, it's just on the slide. So w when uh, this company has uh, enough, um, enough low production costs uh, to enter this auction. And uh, basically this uh, possibility to manipulate contract terms uh, makes uh, favoritism uh, possible. So a craft procurer uh, can demand a bribe, B star, from uh, the company one and uh, for winning a public contract at uh, the reserve price. So here, uh, again, uh, we have some extensions for this model, but here I'd like to consider the basic model. 
And in the basic model, a uh, public procurer has all the bargaining power, so he extracts the maximum possible bribe from the company one. And uh, if uh, and, and the company one uh, has to uh, conclude uh, this contract at the price R, even if uh, it realizes then that its costs are, for instance, high or something like that. Uh, so uh, we we can see that uh, the price uh, of uh, yes. What is the first step? Uh, is it procure demand right first and then humanly manipulate or the another? He manipulates and after that he huh. right, right. Yeah. Uh, first he uh, demands a, a bribe. He, he realizes the reserve price that's <coughs> given exogenously first. And uh, then he demands a bribe. If uh, the company agrees to give a bribe, then he manipulates contract terms. If uh, otherwise, he m may manipulate contract terms or not, uh, it uh, depends. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, uh, let, let's see how the choice of the benevolent and uh, uh, let's see in what uh, situations benevolent and corrupt procurer manipulates contract terms, wh whether each of them have some intent has some incentives for it. So first we can see the benevolent procurer that uh, maximizes actually uh, the probability of purchase in case when uh, he manipulates and doesn't manipulate contract terms. And we propose the, the following, uh, we make the following proposition that uh, the public procurer uh, manipulates contract terms when the reserve price is set uh, uh, over one. So one, that's uh, the maximum production costs in our model. And uh, this uh, picture illustrates this idea that uh, when, uh, mm, when reserve price is higher than one, uh, the probability of one company entering the auction and winning it at the reserve price is higher than the probability that at least one out of n companies enters the auction and uh, mm, wins it at some uh, uh, lower Mm, contract price. Um, now let's consider corrupt procurer. A corrupt procurer um, has uh, the third option. He can, as far as he can, extract a bribe. And uh, in this case, uh, he, uh, the um, favorite company guarantees the purchase. Um, we may conclude that uh, this uh, expected uh, utility is always higher than uh, the f two first uh, utilities. So that's uh, more beneficial for the public procurer always to demand a bribe when uh, the company one can uh, give it to the public procurer. However, that doesn't mean that uh, in our model favoritism will uh, occur in any situations because there are some constraints from the side of the uh, company one. So, first of all, uh, there are no incentives for this company to give a bribe uh, when, uh, when, uh, when uh, the reserve price is higher than zero, uh, uh, is higher than the one, because in this case, as we've seen before, uh, both benevolent procurer uh, has incentives to manipulate contract conditions, so the corrupt procurer also has incentives to manipulate these contract terms, even without a bribe, so there are no incentives to give it. Also, uh, when uh, reserve price is set very, very low, then um, the bribe that uh, this uh, mm, company may get, so the difference between its expected payoff in case of contract manipulation uh, and in case without contract manipulation, is lower than zero. So, because this company maybe prefer even not to enter at all than enter and uh, win uh, the auction at this lower reserve price. So in this situation there will be no favoritism either. So we have some uh, intermediary level of reserve price when uh, the choice of the public procurer is not determined. And we wonder does uh, dual entry costs uh, somehow affect uh, the choice of the pr public procurer. And you come 
up with the next proposition that uh, optimal bribe uh, decreases uh, in entry costs. So the higher entry costs are uh, the higher entry costs are <laughs> the lower uh, the bribe is. Then uh, we consider the simplest uh, possible situation with two bidders. And we uh, prove that uh, when there are two bidders in the market, there will be always such a threshold level of uh, entry costs that uh, when uh, bribe equals zero, and uh, uh, when, um, when entry costs are higher than this, uh, then this uh, optimal bribe is uh, lower th than zero, so there will be no uh, favoritism. Otherwise, when uh, entry costs are higher than, uh, uh, below this level, uh, bribe uh, becomes positive and favoritism occurs. So the company can give a bribe uh, to the public procurer when entry costs are lower than some threshold for each level of this intermediary uh, reserve price. So now we know when uh, benevolent and corrupt procurers uh, manipulate contract terms. And uh, let's uh, see how our contract procurement price depends on uh, whether the procurer is benevolent or corrupt and on the level of entry costs. So uh, when the procurer is benevolent, uh, the higher entry costs are, the higher the public procurement price is. So uh, in case of some reform that uh, is aimed at lowering uh, these uh, entry costs, uh, procurement price also goes down. Uh, when we consider the case of the public uh, of the corrupt procurer, we can see that uh, the situation is the same as for the benevolent procurer, uh, the lower entry costs are the low the procurement prices uh, over the threshold. Under the threshold, favoritism occurs. So uh, uh, in this case, this uh, reserve price is always, uh, uh, the contract price always uh, equals reserve price. So uh, basically, uh, the reform aimed at lowering uh, entry costs has a negative impact on price paid by the benevolent procurer and may have any impact on price paid by the corrupt procurer depending on the initial level of entry costs and uh, the magnitude of their decline. So in this case when both uh, uh, pre and post reform levels of entry costs are, under, uh, are over the threshold uh, P procurement price decreases, then procurement price may increase. Uh, when uh, the uh, post reform level of entry cost becomes lower than the threshold, or there may be no difference uh, in pre and post reform levels of, product, uh, of uh, procurement price. So that's uh, the main result of our model that uh, these uh, entry costs, change in entry costs, may have different effect on prices paid by the benevolent and the corrupt procurers. Now I'd like to uh, illustrate uh, the basic assumption about manipulation and favoritism uh, on uh, the example on Russian data. So we consider the repeated interactions between uh, one public uh, procurer and uh, his uh, preferred bidder in St. Petersburg. So, um, according to some anecdotal evidence and complaints of the companies to the regulator, uh, in the auctions uh, hold held by this uh, public procurer, level of competition was very low. And uh, public procurement, procurement prices were also higher than the prices of drugs procured by other regional procurers. And the reason for it uh, was uh, different types of manipulation of contract terms. So on the slide, uh, we present just three uh, common types that this uh, public procurer used. So for instance, uh, making some uh, I including some uh, contract, uh, included including some uh, details into the contract documentation, including some 
uh, mm, goals that only this uh, uh, favorite bidder can achieve or enlarging public contracts, so making it impossible for the small companies to enter the auction or uh, requiring some additional licenses. So there are a variety of ways. And uh, we wonder uh, how this uh, favoritism of the analyzed procurer uh, affected uh, competition, so both entry and contract prices uh, paid by this uh, procurer. And uh, also um, we know that uh, there were two uh, interventions uh, by the public uh, public regulators. So the first intervention took place uh, in 2009 when the regulator, Federal Antitrust Agency, accused this analyzed procurer of restricting competition in the auctions. And uh, the second uh, intervention was uh, in the beginning of 2012 when the head of this procurer was accused of public waste and uh, later he uh, dismissed. Uh, so we wonder how uh, both of these uh, interventions uh, affected favoritism, uh, if uh, there is any effect. So in order to analyze the first uh, impact, the impact of the decision of the Federal Antitrust Service, uh, we use uh, difference and difference method, uh, OLS and Poisson regressions. Uh, in order to examine the second impact, we use case analysis. So the main uh, informational source for both these, uh, for answering these both questions was the uh, regional public procurement website of St. Petersburg. And we have two data sets. Uh, for the first question, that's uh, regional drug auctions in 2010 and since 2010 to 2010, since 2008 to 2010. So we have uh, two, basically we have two periods before this intervention, since 2010 to the middle of 2009, and after the intervention, since the, p the middle of 2009 to 2010. And we have two groups of auctions. The auctions held by this procurer, and lies procurer, uh, possibly corrupt, and uh, the auctions held by all other regional procurers. And we compare these two groups of auctions between these two periods. That's why we use difference in difference. And also, uh, we collected data set on drug auctions held by this procurer uh, in, to the, to in the, the same period of time, plus uh, uh, in uh, the 2012, after the uh, dismissal of the CEO. And here we applied, for a number of reasons, uh, case analysis, because unfortunately we couldn't make proper regression for this data. And uh, the results show that uh, analyzed procurer uh, did uh, actually uh, manipulated contract terms and uh, the contract uh, that he organized, uh, the, the, the contract in auction that he organized uh, differs a lot, differed a lot from the contract of uh, other regional procurers. Uh, the, the both entry was uh, twice as small as in uh, the auctions held by other regional procurers and prices were uh, significantly higher. Unfortunately, uh, an antitrust intervention didn't have any effect on competition but provoked uh, fake competition in form of fake uh, uh, bids. Um, while the change of uh, the head of this uh, uh, analyzed public procurer uh, b broke uh, uh, these uh, illegal informal connections between the procurer, basically be between the CEO of the public procurer and this uh, favorite company. Uh, new uh, CEO uh, make different lots and um, the number of bids uh, increased uh, twice uh, and uh, the relative price were prices were also decreased. So we can see that, uh, so basically we consider uh, this uh, first and second period as the periods of favoritism and here uh, uh, competition and w was lower 
than in the third period uh, without favoritism. So, and uh, the channel of this favoritism was uh, the manipulation of contract terms. Uh, now I'd like to move on to the second uh, case. So um, I would like to uh, illustrate uh, that uh, uh, how uh, our idea about how entry costs uh, may affect uh, public procurement prices. So uh, we used uh, information on public procurement auctions in Nizhny Novgorod. Uh, the product here is gasoline by gasoline stations. Uh, so uh, in this period, since 2008 to 2013, uh, gasoline was procured uh, via two different procedures, seal bid auctions and open bid auctions. In seal bid auctions uh, there was no uh, difference, uh, while in open bid auctions um, um, regional procurers and, and federal and then municipal procurers were obliged uh, to uh, hold these auctions uh, in electronic way after 2011, uh, regional procurers. So we again apply a method difference uh, indifference. We collect this informative information from regional um, and uh, federal uh, websites and uh, basically we wonder uh, does this shift from traditional to electronic procurement methods, so the shift between two periods before and after again, uh, has a significant impact on open bid auctions and whether this uh, impact uh, uh, differs from uh, the impact, uh, fr from just uh, the time changes between periods that uh, may occur uh, in uh, seal bid auctions. So seal bid auction is a control group, open bid auctions is the uh, uh, treatment group. And here uh, we uh, use different me difference methods with OLS and we came to the results so that uh, uh, actually lowering uh, entry costs uh, lowered uh, procurement prices uh, in uh, um, open bid auctions. Uh, however, in, uh, we see this the whole situation and we could not include much uh, manipulation in, this con in, in these regressions. So we uh, try to analyze uh, the cases of two different procurers. These procurers are very close to each other. They're situated like here, the procurer X and procurer Y. There are less than two kilometers between them. They all pro uh, made these um, um, auctions, uh, open bid auctions and electronic, uh, um, open bid auctions in traditional and electronic form before and after the reform. Uh, but uh, the behavior of this procurer was very different. So while the first procurer did not manipulate contract terms, so we tried to analyze the contract conditions as careful as we could, actually, and we found nothing. While uh, the procurer Ygrick started manipulating contract terms after the reform. So uh, before the reform, holding open bid auctions, he asked uh, uh, for the delivery of uh, the same uh, amount of gasoline. He asked the delivery of this amount of gasoline for like two months. And after the reform, uh, he asked uh, the delivery for five, seven working days. So the, this, um, mm, uh, the, the timing became uh, very, very tough. And uh, we, we see the difference uh, between these two procurers, both in uh, the number of entering companies and in the procurement prices. So while in the auctions held by the first procurer, entry increased and uh, price uh, in comparison to the market price de decreased. Uh, in the second case, we didn't see this result. We see that uh, the number of companies stay the same. So actually there was one company that made a bid before and after the reform, no new entries. And uh, the price uh, even uh, became higher because uh, of the higher reserve price that this procurer set after the reform. So um, we just, um, I, I, I in our opinion, uh, the behavior of the first procurer uh, is close to our model of benevolent procurer who did not manipulate contract terms and his auctions benefited from higher entry and low prices. While uh, the second procurer, his behavior corresponds to 
the idea of corrupt procure. So I'd like uh, to sum up and to say that uh, in this research we are studying favoritism and we are trying to uh, mm, and we conclude <laughs> that uh, favoritism uh, leads to lower competition in public procurement auctions. So uh, the procurer can manipulate contract terms, uh, less uh, fewer companies enter the auction and as a result prices uh, go up. A uh, change in entry costs may um, have different effect on the procurement prices uh, paid by benevolent and crops procurers. So in case of the benevolent procurers, prices uh, will go down, while the, the situation uh, is uh, maybe different in case of the corrupt procurer, because here the price may change in any direction, uh, depending on the initial level of the entry costs and on uh, the magnitude of the decrease. Thank you very much. Thank you, Maria. Do you have any questions or maybe comments? Yes, please. So I have a question. Uh, I think we will get the relation of the theoretical model and the first example which you provided. Uh -huh. And uh, another comment about the first example. Uh -huh. uh, there are some, uh, in the first part, since 2008 till 2010, not to include 2010, there was only open auctions. But yeah. after 2010, there was Sometimes electronic, and maybe there is no open auctions as far as I mm -hmm. mean, oral auctions. Mm -hmm. So, uh, electronic auctions, they assume that electronic auctions should increase the, uh, the amount of competition. Uh -huh. So, how do you measure that your results not uh, the electronic auction result, but some favoritism of mm -hmm. uh, yep. procure? Um, thank you. So, the answer to the first question is actually this. So um, we included uh, several, we, we changed several assumptions in the simulations model and one of the major change is this one so that the procurer can manipulate contract terms and uh, then only one company may enter the auction and uh, that uh, leads to high prices, lower entry. And actually the first uh, example illustrates just this idea that in Russian public procurement uh, using um, different uh, D different, uh, what these different uh, types of manipulation, a procurer uh, can get r can get rid of uh, mm, necessary bidders in the auctions, and it uh, will lead to uh, low entry and high prices. That's just the idea that our assumption is relevant. Th that's th that idea. And y yes, of course, uh, there was uh, actually there was only electronic auctions open with auctions in this period. But uh, um, I haven't put this on the slide, but we analyzed con um, lo a lot of contract documentations in these two periods and how uh, the lots uh, were organized. And uh, before the auction, uh, the, um, in the first period, in three years, uh, the public procurer hold uh, uh, 242 auctions. So about uh, eight auctions each year. And then he made this, con and uh, mostly these auctions, uh, these contracts were very large. But then after this change, uh, the procurer uh, make these contracts uh, much smaller. So in a year, he organized uh, in nine times uh, more auctions than he did before. And, the, the, and we also uh, consider the types of the companies who applied before, uh, before uh, in, in the period of favoritism and uh, after. So there are much more uh, small companies and they acted uh, more ag aggressively as far as we understand because of this change in contract manipulation. But, we, but you're absolutely right that there was another shift that we should uh, uh, somehow uh, at least uh, comment on it. Yes, the, the, there were electronic auctions, and they, of course, uh, they may also have some impact on uh, the decrease in contract prices and uh, high entry. So, yes, I completely agree with it. And unfortunately, we could not uh, extract information about 2011, 
uh, because of some problems, uh, technical problems on that regional site. And mm, so we, we couldn't do nothing, unfortunately. B yeah. So, because I, I think there we will, if we could somehow <laughs> instruct this information, uh, we, uh, th there should be like period of favoritism plus electronic auctions. But we, we could do nothing. I also take into account uh, not only your presentation, uh, but also text uh, of your paper. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, uh, let's hear. Uh, sometimes I. Uh, uh, oops. example uh, a couple of uh, myths yes uh -huh. it's uh, necessary to take into account uh, not only myths yeah. but uh, also uh, standard deviation and uh, use a uh, hypothesis uh, something uh, like uh, this uh, I don't remember uh, exactly uh, something like this uh, minus one And test uh, uh, whether you really have statistical difference. Uh, I mentioned uh, maybe you have uh, no statistical uh, difference. Mm -hmm. And uh, frankly speaking, uh, the, um, it's necessary to take into account uh, that uh, your samples are quite uh, yeah. small yes. and uh, maybe in this case uh, better use a non-parametric uh, um, um, Criteria uh, may be Wilkinson uh, one Whitney, something like this. So I highly recommend you uh, uh, use uh, this part. Thank you. Only small technical. Vision. Thank you very much. Any more questions or maybe comments? Yeah, I have a couple of questions. One, one is. Uh, what happens when the reserve price becomes endogenous? Because mm -hmm. in many settings, the mm -hmm. auctioneer decides upon the reserve price. Yep. Then a related question, are there real life situations when the reserve price can legit legitimately be assumed that it's endogenous when it's involved somehow? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. So th the answer to the first question is uh, yes, uh, one of our not yes. Uh, one of our extensions is uh, the situation when uh, the procurer sets uh, endogenous layers of price in order to maximize his expected utility. And we sh show, uh, we, we prove that uh, uh, benevolent procurer have, uh, the, the, the corrupt procurer sets higher uh, prices, reserve prices, than the benevolent one. Because, uh, yes. So, uh, and, uh, but in this situation, uh, the Entry costs. Uh, f um, the in this situation, the relationship between entry costs and the production and um, the procurement uh, price is the same. But uh, the price is paid by the crops procurer are even higher because of the starting price. It, it becomes higher. And the second, uh, the answer to the second question. Actually, um, we may somehow slightly assume that there are some some of these situations, Beca because uh, as far as I know, for instance, in uh, Nizhny Novgorod or in St. Petersburg or in other regions, there are some uh, centralized authorities that are obliged to make a list of uh, goods, uh, of maximum prices that the procurer should pay for goods and services. So there are some, um, of course, incomplete list of goods and services uh, some and some maximum prices. So, so somehow this price is regulated, but we don't know about the monitoring, of course. Maybe the procurer, procurers tend to break this rule. But in, in some regions, yes, uh, there is the maximum reserve price. 
and some procurers uh, tend to uh, set uh, the maximum reserve price, as uh, they said, and some tend to use it, uh, to, to set it on lower level. Uh, and example, yes. There is a literature on corruption, in particular favor favoritism in procurement and in procurement auctions. But your paper is the first where you can see the both things. To the best of our knowledge, yes. Okay. Yeah. Any more questions or comments? Yeah. Actually, I just want to. We have a huge amount of data on Yes. Okay. And uh, if he is unfair, then uh, the initial price will be. Uh, he is the same, but then it. Uh -huh. Could you provide some um, example of entry costs in, for example, for gasoline markets? Uh, yes, 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 of course. For, for instance, like entry costs in open bid auctions to uh, fulfill. Uh, to re to fulfill the documentation, then to come to the procurer's office uh, to uh, submit this documentation, then come again to the procurer's office to make a bid. And this does not include the cost of implementation of the contract? No. 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 So ju just uh, the cost of preparing a bid. Mm -hmm. yes. Any more questions? No? Well, thank you. Maria, thank you. Thank you.